What's going on YouTube? Chad from the Wisco Boater Channel. Time to get back to work on the Bosun 11 project. It's been uh, probably two, maybe three weeks since I've done anything on this. Uh, I had a fairly long work trip and I've got uh, another month or so before I have to travel again. So hopefully I can get some stuff done on this while I'm here. And I, one thing I need to do today is clean up this workbench. It's just a disaster. Uh, things are just getting collected here from uh, working on this before and working on the car uh, in the meantime. So got to do that today. But um, the main uh, project for today is to get the chine and gunnels removed and uh, glued back in place with um, fiberglass resin. So it's I think about 30 degrees outside. It's uh, 58 here in the shop right now. I've got the heater running. It's a little bit cooler than I'd like it to be to, uh, to do epoxy, but, or to do resin, uh, but it'll work. It'll, it'll be just fine. The, the thing is I have to open up the garage door in order to do that side. So I'm gonna have to try and make fairly quick work of that, get the garage door closed again, get it warmed back up and run the heater for the, um, rest of the afternoon and evening so that uh, it will cure um, at a reasonable temperature. So ideal temperature for the resin is 70 degrees. So it's just gonna, it'll cure, it's gonna cure slower at uh, 58, 60 degrees. I'm gonna remove the uh, chine and gunnel on this side first, mix up some epoxy, get that in place while it's warm in here. And then I will remove the other side with the garage door closed as best I can. Uh, to kind of move around on the other side of it and then again work very quickly mix up some resin get those put back on so let's get to work all right so i'm going to start at the uh, bow and uh, carefully remove these screws not expecting any issues with the uh, chines and gunnel coming off uh, they've been in this bent position for about three weeks now should have some uh, a decent bend um, in the wood once they come off and um, be able to put them back on fairly easily. So start with the uh, we'll start with the chine. All right. So it sprang back more than I thought it would, but there is a curve associated with it. Again, there's no screw here. Uh, because I'm just going to glue that on that pad. The uh, my worry is if I stick a screw in there, it's going to it's going to end up splintering the wood. So don't want to do that. Shine is removed. I'm going to remove this screw up front completely because it was a temporary drywall screw. So we'll throw that back in the bin. Put the correct uh, hardware brass screw and do the same thing for the gunnel. All right, so in doing that, I actually, um, this, there's a little bit of stress being put on the stem right now, pulling it that way because the uh, gunnel and chine are still connected. So I'm gonna remove those two screws. And uh, shit, see that? That happened while I was gone. I didn't even notice it till just now. Well, that changes plans a little bit. Huh. All right, well, I guess I gotta decide what I'm gonna do here. Well, I've, I've thought about this for a few minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and continue with the gunnel and chine on this side, get those set up. I'll have to cut a new part. And what happened here, there is, it's usually very cold in the shop, um, unless I'm running the heater. So I'm, my guess is while I was gone, I didn't realize that I had a knot right here. I didn't even see that. And you can see the wood, the grain goes around that knot and it created a weak spot in the bend. So yeah, there's just no way to fix that. That's gotta come off and be replaced. So 
Uh, I'm gonna leave everything screwed in place on that side. I'm gonna go ahead and get this side glued in place. I might go ahead and do the gunnel down there after I get this side resecured and then remove that chine uh, and recut a new piece. All right, well, I'll continue removing the uh, gunnel. These pieces are good. There's no, there's no knots in the, the, the bend up here. It's a little bit of awkward grain right here, but it's not, uh, the grain's still nice and, nice and straight pretty much all the way through. So I'm not gonna worry about that. This piece has no knots around the bend. So those are good. I can't believe I didn't see that knot before. I wouldn't even have used that piece. I don't know what I have in stock as far as wood goes right now. I may, may have another piece I can cut, may not, I don't know. So I'm gonna put the brass screw in the gunnel up front, maybe. Mix up some resin. So you've all seen resin before. I'm gonna fast forward this part and I'll talk more about it after I get done. Oh, before I fast forward, I'm using uh, three tablespoons of resin and I'll use an eighth of a teaspoon of hardener for this. Cause it's just a little, little bit of surface area that needs to be covered here. Not, or actually even using three tablespoons of resin I'm still gonna end up wasting some, but it's what I got to work with. pretty well caked. What I'm gonna do here while the epoxy is starting to set, uh, as it gets more and more goopy, still, still pretty runny, but I'm gonna let this all kinda goop up just a little bit, and then I'm gonna slather some of that goopiness around these joints as well, because I've got gaps in here and I wanna make sure I get some epoxy into. So each one of these has a little bit of a gap. So that uh, goopy resin will take care of that and I'll show that when I'm done. See the uh, resin as it is, uh, as it thickens up will actually stay in these gaps pretty good. So I actually went over the whole thing. Uh, all the stiffeners, all the gaps in the stiffeners got uh, filled with uh, the goopy resin. I covered the screws and everything is looking good to set up overnight. I am going to go ahead and remove the uh, port side gunnel and leave that china in place. I did go ahead and clamp that uh, crack just to make sure that when I take the gunnel off there isn't too much stress on that to to just break it apart completely. Uh, but I'm gonna leave the chine attached for now, get the gunnel glued in place, remove that chine, and uh, make a new piece. Maybe tomorrow. It's supposed to be really, really cold the next few days, which is why I'm doing this today. Uh, I was hoping to get this done today. I've just made a decision to hold off on that gunnel for a few hours. I think if I let the heater keep going, warm things up in here a little bit more, get this side mostly cured, pretty much cured in the next two to three hours. I should still have some decent enough temperatures to open the garage door and work on that side. My fear in thinking about this is that if I remove that gunnel, that the stem is going to flex this way because these are gonna pull on it. 
and I don't want any of the curing resin to get disturbed. So I'm going to let this sit for a few hours, come back out here in a little while, and see how this is setting up, maybe get that gunnel done today. I've got the new chine cut out. I did have a board left over from when I made these before. It was the last piece. I will uh, work on fitting that after this side cures. It's uh, getting pretty close. It's, uh, and I can touch the uh, resin. It's still, this, that's pretty much dry there. That's still, it's not coming off on my finger, but it's still tacky enough to where it feels soft. So probably another hour or two of letting that cure. And uh, the main thing is I want this to be cured up here. And that's, that's still pretty tacky. I did lay it on pretty thick though, so that might take a little bit longer. But once that cures, I will cut this one to the appropriate length and probably switch it around. I've got a knot right there. So I probably want to use that end down here for the bend just to make sure I don't repeat what just happened. That end looks, I know you probably can't see it in the video, but that end looks pretty good. There's some knots on the side, but none on the, on that side, like down here. So turn that around and uh, then I'll remove the chine, get the new, new holes drilled, they'll match it up. Just a match drill using the uh, broken piece. Get it put in place, hopefully before it gets really cold. Got the uh, port side shine removed, and I'm glad I didn't record that because it would have been pathetic watching my 42 year old body squeeze back between the boat and the uh, garage door to, to get this thing unscrewed. So anyway, I'm going to use this piece, the broken piece, uh, as a template to drill the holes for those screws onto the new piece. And then I'll have to trim the front again. Shouldn't have to trim the, the aft end. I'll just stick that right in the, in the slot on the transom and then just trim the front. All right, well I need to remove the screws out of the broken chine. And then I'll clamp these two together. Mark out the hole locations. It might be kind of hard to clamp together actually because this board, the old, the broken chine already has some curvature from being screwed into place for several weeks. But I'll give it a try. together. Drilled out. Uh, the front hole is at an angle so I won't be able to drill it exact but I'm just going to mark it. This hole is at an angle so I obviously can't drill because I'll, I'll be off by half inch, three quarters of an inch. So just uh, took from the uh, center of the entry and marked it on the board below then I'll transfer that back over so I have a starting point and I will mark the cut angle looking straight down on it that's about right so that'll be, I'll cut that angle and then we'll have to bevel it like I've done here. And I'll mark right there. And then, <laughs> upside down camera. Okay, that's marked and then I'm gonna mark the 
transom end because there is a little bit of a cutoff that has to happen here. All right, so now I can trash the old shine and uh, work on getting those front and rear angles cut and then it should be ready to install it. I'm getting too old to work in small spaces. Oh man. All right, so the, the uh, remade chine is now screwed into frames two, three, and the transom. And now I'm gonna wrap it around frame one here and then up to the stem and make a bevel. This actually worked out really well. And hopefully this one doesn't break because this one fits much better than the first one. Very flush. Ugh, can barely hold it with the spring tension. New chine installed. Actually, like I said, it came out better than the first one and it came it's better than this one too. So if it's good, I don't have any knot issues on the bend. So this should be ready to glue in place. The only uh, decision I have to make right now is it's, uh, it's now nighttime and do I want to open the garage door and mix up some epoxy or not? All right, might as well do it. It's gonna be uber cold tomorrow, so just get this done. All right, I put the chair there so I could try and retain some of the heat in the little shop here. The cold air will, should stay at the bottom and warm air at the top, so it should stay a little bit warmer in here. That way I'll be able to heat the shop up a little bit quicker once I get the epoxy spread. shine are permanently installed glued in place let the heater run as long as I can tonight it did drop to 42 degrees from 61 so I lost 20 degrees opening the garage door for uh, about 20 minutes there so not terrible considering it's uh, 27 28 degrees outside well I'm happy I did that tonight um, like I said it's gonna be really really cold the next couple of days and I would not want to open the garage when it gets uh, down into the teens or single digits. So with that done uh, and all set up, it's uh, I think the next thing is the, so I did the chines. So it's now time for the bottom board bearers, which these are the uh, ambiguous <laughs> pieces right here. There's no measurements given anywhere. Uh, the best guess that I have is that they're halfway between the frames. So you see you've got frame one, two, and three, and there's a bottom board bearer there and one there. Looks to be about halfway between the frames, so that's what I'm going to shoot for. As mentioned uh, just a minute ago, the next step is to build the bottom bearers, which I finally understand what these are. They are bearing the weight of the floorboards. So that's why they're called bottom board bearers. These are the bottom boards. That's a bottom board. That's a bottom board that lays down. These are the boards that carry the weight of whatever is on the floor. Now that I fully understand what these are, 
I get why there's really no dimension given and that it makes sense that they're just basically halfway between that's a bottom board bearer there and they're halfway between the uh, frames here so pretty simple they are let's see we do two of them three foot nine each two and five eighths inch wide i've got a very nice piece of um, number two pine here uh, just one little knot here in the in the middle that will not get used so i got a real clean piece over here and a real clean piece over here this has uh, uh, some damage on this side, but I only need two and five eighths. So I'm gonna measure three foot nine and two and five eighths, um, and then bring them back in and start getting them fit in this general area and this general area. Bottom board bearers are cut to the length, and uh, so what I have to do now is um, I've got a center line marked as well as the width of the hog. So I'm gonna stick this underneath here and kind of show you where this is gonna go. That's actually too long for where I wanna put it, which I figured it might be. Let's jam it there for a second and then I can kind of show you. Never mind. It should go about right here. It's too wide, so it's only going into about right there. It needs to go there. So this one, I will cut. This one, see again, same markings. It goes halfway between frames two and three. So it's gonna go right in about there. Okay, so what I have to do is uh, get it centered and then clamp it and then I have to mark the location of the stiffeners because they're gonna have to be trimmed. This isn't that big of a deal. Um, I, I do wish there was a little bit more detail given in the instructions because I just feel like this is gonna be a very iterative process in order to get these to fit, especially that one that goes in the second position there because there's four stiffeners that have to be cleared and uh, it's just going to be kind of a pain in the butt i guess this one won't be too bad i just have to clear two stiffeners it's mounted right on the hog i don't have to clear the hog i don't know just an interesting choice that there's not much detail on on this step but oh well we'll figure it out clamped in place um, i've got the stiffeners marked on the board on either side and now i need to take a measurement from here to here, that's gonna give me the, the max depth that I need to cut down uh, on this, the outside stiffener on this side and the outside of the stiffener on that side. Front one is a uh, fit. You can see I've got a little bit of a gap underneath the stiffener. It's the same thing on that side, but not a huge deal. Use a little bit of uh, Bondo glass or some chop strand fiber or something to fill it in um, down the road. So all you need to do now, I just eyeballed it to make sure that it's square. And uh, yeah, still looks like my eyeball is still pretty well calibrated. That's nice and square. So I'm gonna drill two uh, screw holes in the hog there to hold it in place. I did use the, uh, the front one as a template to mark the cuts for the inside stiffeners for this one. Once I get those cut, actually, I might just clamp it in place and go ahead and mark the outer ones as well because it's not going to go up far enough to even meet those until I get those outside ones cut. Very, very iterative as I figured it would be. And the second bottom board bearer is now in place. All right, so I'm going to drill holes in uh, the bottom board bearers that I just made. Get those in place so I can take the clamps off and then I can work on figuring out how to uh, bevel those. Uh, actually, I'm thinking about this. I probably will bevel them uh, here very soon. Uh, but I want to get them screwed in place so that they're nice and solid. And then um, I'll use a piece of cardboard or something, whatever I can find to mark the bevel that needs to be cut. Um, I'll do that and then get them glued in place and then it's ready to uh, start putting skin on. So 
excited. All right, I'm gonna stop it here, and uh, I've got two more holes to drill, but I gotta figure out how to uh, fill that gap with some wood first. And then I gotta figure out uh, what I'm gonna use to mark that bevel so that I can end this video. Here's what I did to get this line. Use the straight edge. Uh, the bevels aren't perfect on the hog yet. There's gonna be uh, some beveling done out here on the chine. So what I'm gonna do right now is just, uh, I'm, I've marked it. I'm going to cut the line. I usually cut short of the line, but in this case, uh, I'm going to actually cut right on the line. That should give me a pretty close to flush cut for the uh, skin to match up to later. I'm gonna remove the screws, um, go out and probably run the jigsaw on these and uh, come back, mix up a little bit of epoxy glue these things in. Bottom bearers are installed permanently at this point. I used some very thin shavings from cutting boards off in order to uh, get those to fit right. Here, I can show you right here. Those pieces right there, they are a sixteenth or so thick. So I used those to fill the gaps right there. Yeah, everything is screwed in place, so this is all looking fantastic. I did have a little bit of, well, I still have extra epoxy. There's gonna be a bunch of it's gonna be wasted, unfortunately, but there was a little bit of a trough right here, a little bit of a trough right there, so used some extra epoxy, filled those in. I'll sand those down. Uh, screw heads that had a little bit of a dip or a concave um, effect from the epoxy drying, uh, filled those back up, so. Those are going to get sanded flush. At this point, the structure of the boat is now built. The very next step, as I switch to the next page, is covering. So, skeletal structure of the Boson 11, done. Uh, after this, uh, after the two pieces uh, that I just did, the uh, bottom board bearers, after they dry, I will remove the tires and there shouldn't be any spring up or any twist or anything. This is a nice solid piece of uh, boat skeleton at this point. So should be able to get those out of the way. And the next thing to do is to go buy some quarter inch plywood and start skinning. Fantastic. Thanks for watching this episode of the Boson 11 Project Build, everybody. Appreciate you watching. Send me some comments. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Tell all your friends because I love shooting video and editing video. And uh, the result is uh, a YouTube channel that um, I never really intended to have, but I'm glad that I do. So appreciate everybody that follows me. And I love hearing the comments. So again, send me some comments if uh, you like what you see. If you have any questions about what's going on. Uh, what I'm working on here. So uh, we will see it next time on the Whisker Butter channel. Happy boating, everybody.